Oh boy. Well, uh, I am going to be talking about knives, but I got to clear my table off here first. This is um, my uh, original fat version of a PS3 that, um, and at the moment, I think it's going to be a couple of these capacitor chips that died because, well, some of the uh, thermal tape ended up uh, bubbling up. Kind of looks a little bit like uh, Nestle's Crunch Bar. That's probably not all that good, but I am going to try and pull some codes. I'm just waiting for my uh, TTL reader to be able to do all of that stuff. So, yeah, I'll be trying to fix that, but this whole solder mat is uh, in the way. So let's go ahead and carefully move that, and here we go. Actually, I have my normal crap here. All right, first knife out here. Some of you are probably a little familiar with this guy. It's uh, this one right here. This is the Tucson 127. This is the more fancy version. And you know what? To uh, pull it out, I got uh, one of the uh, the budget versions here too, so we can kind of take a look at a little bit of differences. Already, I can tell you, I kind of jacked the clip up on this guy here. Uh, it is into uh, G10 in a, uh, a single little thing there. We can see that it's uh, raised up a little bit. I accidentally left this in a pair of shorts on um, the floor of my bedroom and then stepped on it. And uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of movement because of that, unfortunately. It's nowhere near as bad as uh, a lot of other ones are. And I guess I could probably, if it really bothered me, uh, try to uh, put some shim sort of uh, material in there or maybe try and uh, melt and grind away some G10. I don't know. Either way. Um, this guy here is Wong Design, and uh, especially the uh, the budget version of this thing has often been hailed as a very, very fantastic uh, budget knife, and uh, they both are. Now, there are some differences here, uh, obviously, besides the, uh, the pocket clip that's uh, different. Uh, this thing is also a... Um, titanium linered knife one of the few that uh, they've done but not the only one whereas this one's of course steel uh, that and the blade stock thickness on here is quite a bit thicker this guy's 3.65 millimeters this one's uh, basically four so it is thicker but you do get you know the orange g10 the only option they've ever done and uh, a little carbon fiber kind of bolstery sort of guys there but other than that they're, they're about the same same kind of a uh, great action, same very, very tiny precise tip going on there. This guy being made from 14C28N. The tip on this thing might just be a little bit more robust than uh, what we get here with the M390, but it seems like uh, they kind of did these either new old stock or they had some other uh, old blades or something like that. Um, as such, I haven't really done a full cut test on it, but uh, this blade steel, even though I did purchase it new rather recently from the, the whole eBay auctions and stuff like that, I don't really feel incredibly hard. So it's probably a little bit more of their uh, their older stuff. Maybe they found a, a sheet of uh, blades that they had cut out that they didn't do a run of or something like that. Not quite sure. Either way, um, you know, it's kind of neat that I had it. Uh, kind of unfortunate that I jacked the clip up, or at least the, uh, the handle scales for the clip a little tiny bit. But, um, yeah. Oh, and titanium backspacer, sure, instead of the uh, the black G10 there. But overall, yeah, it's a neat knife, especially if you have it. It's all right. You know, their, their M390 kind of acts, uh, or at least their uh, much older stuff that they, they did way too soft. Um, I don't know, maybe somewhere around S30V or something like that. I guess that's kind of a lot of people's consensus. I've had it do uh, a bit better than that or down to maybe like D2 kind of levels or something like that. So, you know, it is it is what it is. And that was, you know, part of why these guys were considered one of the dice roll companies for a long time because you never knew exactly what you were going to get with the fancier materials and all that sort of stuff. But this thing still... Quite nice. Uh, I really do appreciate having the uh, the whole titanium liners and everything like that. Really does uh, make this thing feel even stronger than uh, this guy is. However, like I said, I got this one from a, a newer auction, so I probably spent I don't 
remember shoot it's not in front of me um it was probably close to 100 bucks or something like that maybe like 110 or something like that whereas these guys when they were around and uh very very um abundant uh geez they were like <laughs> for like 35 to 40 bucks or something like that and for those that sort of price it's fantastic between the two if you had your option i would probably go with the the budget one overall uh, you know just much better value and all that sort of stuff but yeah honestly it's all up to you but there we go there's the ts127 fancy version and m390 steel here let's see the next one i have up here is this guy this is a tucson this is a david chen design as we can see here we got his little scribblings on the pocket clip kind of his uh his whole spiel with uh different companies like petrified fish and shield and then he's done some uh some work with in the past this is an enormous knife this is using uh micarta it's uh it's interesting it does have a lot of the uh the micro milling and everything going on there uh they tried to dye it green but uh the the base color is uh way too brown um and uh whatnot so you know it's not a full green it's kind of a, a mottled kind of color but uh it's all right uh, because of that micro milling, it's got a massive amount of grip going on here. Uh, like I said, yeah, it's an enormous freaking knife. Or at least as far as the, uh, the blade length goes. 3.9 inches. So, yeah, this is digging right into, uh, cold steel territory of, uh, you know, standard length for a knife. Uh, this one's interesting as it's the first one that they've released using N690 blade steel. Uh, N690, it's, um, it's interesting. It's, uh, at or maybe a little bit better than 440C. So it's, uh, it's an all right budget kind of steel there. Um, especially because they've either had difficulties getting and or processing without scratching stuff like 14C28N. So they haven't been doing, uh, as much of that. But this is one of the new blade steels that, uh, they're going to be offering for some of their more budget models. Um, they're also, uh, according to at least their Instagram uh, page and stuff like that, uh, doing some more tests and stuff like that and uh, seeing if it's worth it for them to use 154CM for their, uh, for their uh, non-powder blade steels and stuff like that. I'm all for that. Um, you know, uh, some other companies like uh, Kaiser and uh, recently Concept, um, I think QSP a little bit, you know, there's, there's been a lot more companies uh, jumping on using 154CM, which is, it's a great steel. It is in that 440C family, but it is, you know, much improved as far as that, which both of those were technically designed for um, ball bearings, not necessarily knife blades, but hey, 14C28N is one of the very few blade steels that was ever um, designed specifically for knives. Um, and Kershaw helped along there. I don't know. I've, I've talked about that before in the past. That's not necessarily all that important. Uh, but because of that, I do sharpen this to a little bit more obtuse of an angle than uh, I would for a little bit higher end steels, just because uh, this doesn't have quite that stability at a really, really thin edge. So like 440C and stuff like that, I'll sharpen this to about 20 degrees. Um, I think it was about 22 out of the factory or so, so it did take a little bit of um, uh, reprofiling to get it there, but not a whole lot. And this blade steel isn't uh, very difficult to uh, end up sharpening overall. Supremely great, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, action out of the box there. But it's really hard to mess up a knife that's uh, quite thick and has 3.9 inches of blade length on there. Um, yeah, 3.8 millimeters, so, uh, you know, the, uh, the Tucson special as far as, uh, the thickness of the blade there. Uh, at least the blade is all sorts of sunken in there. I don't really have any troubles, uh, with that. It does have their, uh, large, uh, deep carry pocket clip. But, yeah, the flipper tab and the, um, that flick out does a pretty good job. Looks like high saber grind there. We got a little bit of a fuller and then a swedge up top. A whole bunch of those, uh, you know, marketing words and stuff like that. And we have these uh, thumb studs, which they use on uh, quite a few models. Uh, they are titanium, just like um, they are on pretty much anything else. 
for some people that's interesting because they can anodize them to uh, have just a little bit of pop of color or something like that. I don't know. Maybe green would be, you know, uh, probably the best way to go, even though it is kind of one of the more difficult colors to uh, reach with the anodization since it's on the uh, the very high end of the, uh, the voltage range for you to... Uh, color and treat them and all that sort of stuff uh, really really neutral handle um, and we don't really have much in the way of contouring we have milling that's happened but we have a lot of flat areas uh, at the bottom here they don't uh, curve around all that much as such this definitely feels more like a budget knife and especially these uh, last two fingers here um, not the most comfortable thing out there but, uh, you know, it does a lot of things pretty good. It's got a decent sharpening choil on there. This is definitely much more designed for uh, tactical applications with the, uh, the very large sort of uh, uh, blade length and the clip point uh, with the uh, decently thick tip going on. All that sort of stuff. It's, it's interesting, but definitely another one of those budget knives that... Uh, you know, it'd probably go by the wayside. Not a whole lot of people probably uh, super interested in it. But I was kind of interested to uh, see how their uh, N690 ends up doing. It seems to be pretty good. Um, this one, um, I, I, it still took me a decent amount of time. I'm not saying the blade steel was soft, but I have had another one in N690 a little bit more recent than this one that does feel... A bit harder so I don't know if maybe I got like a 58 on this and then it was closer to 60 or something like that on the other one not quite sure but yeah, there we go there's that uh, let's see the next up that I got uh, I do believe I've done a full review on this guy this is the Tucson TS 500 this is another David Chen design but this is a little more high-end not uh, g10 or micarta uh, sort of stuff it is still d2 and uh yeah this thing is wild <laughs> super tall decently thick um and a uh, very very interesting uh blade configuration here maybe kind of looks a bit like a tonto but uh, i really do look at these as uh, two very very different edges we got a very, very high flat grind uh, going down to here with a bit of a downward cant. So, um, you know, that helps out, especially with the ergonomics, to be able to push into that. And it will, um, you know, starting at the top there, you have a lot of uh, blade to uh, keep hold of all of that. Uh, this portion up here is, uh, a, a, all intents and purposes, Scandi grind. Where it goes literally to zero, I think I've probably uh, put uh, a bit of a, um, a micro convex or edge on it from uh, doing some stropping or something like that after I uh, played around with this thing a bit. Uh, but yeah, this thing is interesting. It's not a chisel. It's uh, fully ground both sides of it. Um, so if you are going to try to uh, do some chiseling tasks or something like that with it, you do have to uh, keep that uh, particular thing in mind. Also, if you are going to uh, sharpen this thing, it's much easier to do it freestyle because you can very much feel that single edge uh, or bevel that, that's going on there. Uh, something very, very difficult to uh, end up achieving with a lot of uh, fixed angle sharpening systems, especially ones where you have to adjust it with the worm screw or something like that. Uh, so yeah, there we go. There's the blade on it. We have a hole. Uh, I haven't had much luck at all deploying this at all. My hand is on the pocket clip, which is only putting pressure on some micarta. It's not really affecting the, uh, the subframe lock. And no matter what, I cannot do it. And my finger, at least, way too thick to be able to do a reverse flick on this thing. So. Flipper tab only, pretty much. Uh, and you know what? This thing's pretty darn ugly. We don't have any snaggle tooth uh, issues going on here. It's pretty ugly. It is using some of their older meh carta, uh, but they've dyed it black. Uh, they've done that on a couple of them. And obviously, you can see, it, it doesn't fully take it unless you submerge it for way, way longer than 
is probably reasonable um, with it. But the ergonomics, despite all of that, are fantastic on this thing. Um, I don't really myself have a huge amount of uh, need for this uh, kind of scandy or high um, high bevel uh, sort of uh, tip there. But the rest of it, functioning as a uh, sheep's foot or something like that, is quite nice. Uh, I've actually enjoyed cutting with this thing a heck of a lot more than I thought I would. But uh, yeah, it also has their large and domed uh, call-out pivot collars. These ones are much more difficult if you're trying to modify them to remove that if um, you know you don't like the whole call-out pivots and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot else to uh, really cover on this thing. It's, uh, it's very, very interesting and out there, but pretty useful. Surprise, surprise on that one. All right, next up, we have a strange one. And that's this guy right here. This is the Rahi RH-186. Uh, this is sold directly from his website. Does not mention uh, the manufacturer of this knife, uh, whereas he, he has with uh, some others um, that he has listed up there between some budget stuff from Tigend um, and there's another one that starts with a Y that uh, is a little bit more um, fancy and up there. Um, however, to the best of my knowledge uh, from, from everything that's going on here, my guess is that Tucson is the, uh, the OEM for this guy. Not sure exactly if there was a contractual reason why he was able to release this as a Raihi model only, uh, rather than um, you know it actually having Tucson branding on it. But I'll, I'll walk you through some of my uh, my thought processes on that. But still, we have a uh, slip joint here, titanium. And then we have uh, basically um, some brass cages here that are holding three panels of uh, white lip mother of pearl. Uh, I think they uh, they refer to it as fritillaria on, um, on the website, which is a terrible mistranslation because uh, fritillaria is a type of flower, but it's also known as some sort of mother of something or other and i think there was just a uh, just a complete uh, mistranslation that they should probably <laughs> look into or something like that in the future uh but yeah this is white lip mother of pearl uh and we do have some um acrylic uh on the top there a little transparent stuff to uh keep it all nice and uh scratch free and all that sort of stuff and then we also have a little brass banding going on there this is uh quite thick which that's the first thing that makes me think Tucson, because Tucson loves to do slip joints, especially the closer to get to four millimeter blade stock thickness for reasons, I guess. We also have a uh, pivot colors on these guys. Uh, in all honesty, I'm not sure if that's titanium. Doesn't quite look like it to me, so it's possible that it's uh, anodized aluminum for for those particular things. Not quite sure. Um, not there we are with that. Um, this thing is really, really attractive. The fit and finish on it is quite nice. Uh, unless I specifically try to run my fingernail across uh, this. I only just barely feel these two here and everything on that side perfectly fine. The blade on this kind of looks like it has an eye of Horus uh, sort of thing going on there, but... None of the rest of this is Egyptian themed at all. That just kind of makes me think of uh, a little bit of what that kind of looks like. Uh, I would like a little bit more uh, strength in the uh, in the whole back spring. It's not bad, but uh, it's. I would prefer a lot. I I tend to like to struggle at least a little tiny bit uh, trying to uh, close one uh, single handedly. And this is just a little bit too easy for it. But we got a crown spine here. Like I said, super thick spine on this guy. It's 3.5. It's not a full 4 millimeters, but there we go. And then we got um, some crenellations going on uh, up there. And then on the, uh, the back spring here. So, uh, the whole Tucson thing here. For one, the, uh, the font that they've ended up using here, uh, especially like the RH-186 and the M390 and stuff like that, sure, their their logo is going to be a little bit different. But that's the same 
uh, font that Tucson ends up using in a lot of stuff. Uh, two, they've done quite a bit of work with uh, Tucson in the past. Uh, but the other thing that uh, I will mention, here's the box that it comes in. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this came attached with this little guy. It's a little bit of a black leather with a, uh, a brass bead on there. It is identical in uh, length as well as the bead that you get. Let me dig through some of this stuff here. That uh, you get with uh, two sons uh, slip joints. Yeah, I got like three of them hanging out there. Uh, let's see if I can't. That is not the one I'm looking for. There we go. Um, yeah, like uh, this one's the TS-359. They're little Damascus uh, slip joints. Um, and then the smaller one. Uh, absolutely identical. And then also uh, the feeling of the uh, the M390 still makes me think that uh, it was probably heat treated at the same place. You know that is that's a lot more subjective overall. I, I do realize that, but um, you know I have much more reason to think that this came from uh, Tucson uh, than uh, a lot of other stuff out there. Still, pretty interesting knife. Um, it's kind of in that. Uh, Curved, but still reminds me of a uh, sob buster kind of thing. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that, um, especially with the, uh, the, let me get uh, the box out of the way here, uh, with how they've put everything together, this thing is slicker than the back seat of uh, Shaft's El Dorado. So um, if you were trying to do a lot of, uh, fairly hard work or it was warm at all. Um, I've, I have a feeling that sweat is going to be your absolute worst enemy and this will probably feel like a stainless steel bar of soap in your hand. Um, still, it doesn't feel like it's going to twist on me so much, but still, it's probably really, really easy to uh, accidentally uh, let go or have that thing slip out. But still, very, very attractive knife overall. And uh, yeah, we do have a uh, internal stop pin there, so we don't have to worry about any blade wrappers or anything like that. There's the uh, lanyard hole pin where the uh, leather and bead was attached to. So yeah, it's a it's an attractive piece, but still a little bit strange overall. Just me in general with uh, really really thick blade stock slip joints uh, always feel a little weird. Hopefully that edit was all right. So here's the last one we got up. It's the Six Leaf SL24. It's this guy here. And this is quite a bit different uh, because this is a Six Leaf. However, it's not for Metal Snake. It's a Jelly Jerry design here. And uh, it's a pretty good design. Uh, he does have another one. I think it's called 419 or 421. Not 421. 412, I think, yeah, I think it's 412. Um, but this is uh, fairly similar to it. Uh, definitely came out first. Um, but yeah, it's a D2 blade. So there you go with that. Uh, titanium. Uh, I got the purple ones, which, or, which was uh, the first option that was available, but also my favorite. Uh, I think they also have uh, some just kind of a darkened and uh, possibly some gold bronze kind of uh, things going on there. Um, so carbon fiber, uh, really, really well done on there. So that's fantastic to see. There's no voids or anything like that. We got the three little grooves in there that we've seen on um, some other Jelly Jerry's in the past. This is a steel liner lock, however, which uh, some photos online kind of deceive you into thinking that this is a... Uh, titanium subframe lock or something like that or a bolster lock so that is a little bit different unfortunately um it was a bit of a uh, surprise to me when i got it but you know i'm all right with it we got a very very large um lanyard point here on the titanium backspacer pocket clip that ends up working out all right uh, has a decent flat area and a bit slanted so that ends up working out. It is uh, it is mounted from the inside here, um, and uh, 
Still, unfortunately, it is basically one screw uh, going into there. I would like to see more than one uh, connection point, especially on a lot of these guys. And it seems like, well, they probably had the room to do that on here. So that was a little unfortunate. But, and what are you going to do? Uh, so this thing has a, a, a nice upsweep here. Um, I guess you could probably call that whole things uh, that it has a little bit of a harpoon kind of look to it but for me it, it just basically is the thumb ramp here very very large crenellations um i wouldn't have minded them being a little bit sharper than they are but uh they do have the rest of that blade kind of coming up there here let's see we got a uh, 3.74 inch blade on here so it's uh it's fairly large it's it's definitely a full-size knife there we have the um, sandblasted uh, finish that uh, Six Leaf uh, basically has adopted across the board on every single knife that they do, um, which is kind of unfortunate. It's not my favorite to look at. Um, it's uh, easier for them to scratch. It's easier for those knives to rust than a lot of the other higher polished finishes like um, satin or stone wash or anything like that and at least with six leaf it does kind of affect their uh their action and uh that's something that suffers on this guy too uh let's see if i can't get a little bit of sound out of it here yeah so it uh it makes a little bit of um noise that's not super pleasant it's still wiggle to drop shut but uh doesn't feel amazing while doing so well a lot of the rest of that really makes up for it you got plenty of different um deployment options here the plums grind could have gone better but it's still not uh stupendously egregious on it uh the flipper dab does kind of uh curve back a little bit so if i'm choking up a bit on there it is it, it does start to uh dig in on my finger it's not as uh, uncomfortable and I can kind of um, uh, adjust that away from it. Uh, pinch grip on it is uh, absolutely amazing, uh, especially with this uh, kind of whole hump sort of thing back here. And a reverse grip is uh, pretty darn good on it as well. Not necessarily for doing pairing things, but uh, if you are trying to do um, some uh, chest lever cuts or something like that, where you hold something in this hand that's sticking up, you can uh, really get across that, so that's fairly comfortable as well. So, I'm not sad about this knife at all. Um, I do think, um, I, I think maybe just a little bit, um, that uh, the Tucson knife uh, that he um, had that came out just, I don't know, a, a week or two uh, afterwards, um, with kind of like one or two little caveats, I think it's probably a better design overall. It's still fairly darn similar to this guy. Um, however, it does have a, a bit longer blade. Um, it's basically all belly instead of having a bit more of a uh, short point there or something like that. But still, it's a, it's a nice knife. And, um, you know, especially if you can uh, grab one of these guys from an auction or um if it actually comes in for a a decent retail at uh like white mountain knives or something like that these guys are a pretty good buy at uh i don't know probably um 60 to 70 bucks it might not be all that fantastic if it's uh pushing up towards 100 or a little bit over that though but i don't know that's just kind of my opinion on the whole thing and how i've uh ended up picking up a lot of uh, six leaves for uh, decently cheap through their eBay stuff. Uh, absolutely no snaggle tooth on this guy here. We got the stop pin up top, but it does come out to uh, right behind that, uh, that flipper tab, as we can see. So that would uh, affect back there. So if you wanted to do anything with sharpening choil, very, very easy to do so on this guy. So, you know, it doesn't have an internal stop pin, but at least the, um, or internal to the blade stop pin, but uh, you can still modify this thing fairly decently if you need to. So yeah, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good model overall. I like it. But, uh, all right. Yep, yeah, we've come to the end of the video. I was just checking to see if there was uh, anything else kind of going on here. This guy is a little bit heavy at like six and a quarter ounces, though. Um, 
that would be 177 grams so yeah a little weighty and uh, a bit of that's probably the um stainless liners where we do have uh, quite a bit of skeletonization going on there but still yeah that and the thick heavy d2 blade but all right there we go there's everything that i uh that i had here i don't remember the uh the uh the order so there's the uh the six leaf sl24 the tucson 500 the tucson 505 uh we got the r and the rahi um 186 and then we got the tucson 127 uh m390 fancy version so there we go this one went on a little bit longer than it probably should have but uh you know what i guess i can't help but talk since uh i don't do that enough in my daily life at least I can talk into a microphone and a camera. So, <laughs> alrighty. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Uh, that's great.